Yeah, hi, uh, welcome to Embedded World 2024, uh, the ARM booth. Uh, my name is Pablo Fraile. I uh, in the IoT line of business and I work with uh, Smart Home, but I'm going to show you a bit of what we have here in the, in the booth. Um, we're going to start with this. Um, this demo is a couple of NXP boards, IMX93. They are running an NVIDIA Tau open source AI model. It's a face and body tracking demo. And what you can see here in the two screens, we have two identical hardware uh, boards. The one at the top is running the uh, AI model on our Cortex A55 cluster inside this uh, NXP board. As you can see, the frame rate is about one frame per second. Um, the CPU utilization over here is very close to 100%, so it's working fully loaded. Um, if you look at the same, exactly the same um, workload on this other board, is running on our Cortex A55, but also our Ethos U65, which is our NPU and neural processor accelerator. And the frame rate is about 11 times higher, um, 11.5 FPS. Uh, the CPU utilization has gone down to about 30%. And, and also, I think quite interestingly, the temperature of the board is about two to three degrees lower. So, so you can see identical hardware, identical um, workload, but it's running on two different pieces of uh, ARM IP, and you can see the performance of our MPU. It's very uh, important, that's why it's very important to have AI acceleration. It's very SOC. important to have AI acceleration on some uh, workloads, not always, and I'm gonna show you a bit later where uh, when you want to have something that can run ubiquitously on every single, uh, on every single device, then you may not need the, your acceleration. You can run everything on your CPU, and that's an interesting new example that I'll show you in a minute. But before we do that, I'm going to show you, so that was U65, remember? Um, that's a, an MPU that's available in the market in hardware such as that NXP board. If you come here, we can show you the product we announced yesterday Tuesday, this is our Ethos U85 AI accelerator. It's the third generation of this family of, uh, of MPUs. Uh, based on the same, same architecture uh, from ARM, but with a couple of different um, innovations. First of all, it's much more power efficient. It's about 20% more power efficient than U65 that you just saw. It also supports transformer networks which is the new uh, sort of uh, technology for ML and AI that where things like uh, LLMs are based. And what you can see here, we have a new a transformer network running on the U65 that you saw earlier and on the U85 that we just launched yesterday. And what you can see here, um, it's a bit hard to see, but when you look at the actual inference time, here is about 13 seconds at the bottom on this one is about 1.6 seconds. So again, significant improvement. The, the performance improvement is not only because of the technology inside um, Ethos, it's not eight to 10 times faster, but what happens is the whole um, transformer network is running inside that uh, Ethos U85. Whereas on U65 doesn't support every single operator, so some of that is running on the CPU. Again, running it on the CPU has a performance impact. Is it that uh, every year you find new tricks in the AI to, to accelerate more in the SOC and uh, new ideas and or? Yeah. How do you make so much improvement in just one year? Well, um, I think what happens is uh, AI is moving so fast that you have to, yes, have a, every, every year we have to have better IP, better uh, silicon technology, but at the same time, we need to really focus on our software um, compilers and tools and model support. So those are the two sides of the coin. If you really want to get the best performance every year, you, you just can't rely on silicon. You have to basically look at it from a solution perspective. Is it also to do with new nodes that there's so much more space on the, uh, on the silicon that, that you just fill it up with AI stuff? Um, not necessarily. I think the silicon area is always very precious. So I think we want to look at it as so how do we solve this problem in the most efficient way. And again, looking at it from a combination of software and hardware and tools and, and developer support, that's, that's the only way you can achieve that kind of performance.
Um, so we are, uh, we've just been talking about uh, network acceleration, NPUs. One interesting aspect of AI is the fact that not every device is going to have an NPU, but in some cases you want to run your, your machine learning on every single device that you can. So do you, when you want ubiquity, when you want scale, the best way to achieve that is using the ARM Cortex-A uh, processors. Uh, for example, on mobile phones, most of the mobile phones in the market today use ARM Cortex-A. Uh, a lot of the uh, IoT devices use Cortex-A, Cortex-M. So Cortex um, processors from ARM give you that ubiquity. And in this case, we have a demo, uh, you can see here in the video, we have a demo of a large language model running on our Cortex-A 510 and A715. So, um, uh, there, there's so much performance in people's pockets, like billions of phones out there, yeah, yeah. and it's so great to potentially use more of that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think what's, what's really interesting is that those um, processors from ARM that have been you know, very successful in the mobile space for so many years are now coming to the IoT space as well. So I think what you will see in the next 12 to 18 months is, uh, is processors from some of the companies around here in the show with some of these Cortex-A 5X series uh, processors, and we'll be able to run these large sandwich models on IoT devices. And I guess they could be updated of the air, the models as they get improved all the Absolutely. time. Absolutely. And then, uh, does it, because 5G is so fast, but yeah. still, maybe you can combine offline with online uh, to have an even better AI assistant? Well, yeah, absolutely. I think um, you, can, you can update the models as they come along. You can retrain the models as well. Um, so the, the whole training models and retraining those models is a completely different topic that it's, it's very complex to talk about it in, in five minutes. But we can talk about it in a different video. And, um, but I think what, what's interesting here, we have a couple of models. Um, one of them is from Microsoft, Phi2. The other one is from Meta, Llama, Llama2. Uh, both of them are open source. We've compiled both of them for our Cortex-A processors, and we have them running natively here without actually um, accessing the cloud, everything running on the device. So I loved using ChatGPT for my YouTube descriptions. Yeah. Uh, can something as cool as that yeah. run on a Cortex-A? So, or so what, this is how a, good can it be compared so, to what ChatGPT is doing and stuff? So ChatGPT is probably uh, you know hundreds of billions of models of parameters. These, uh, these parameters are between two, five, seven billion uh, parameters, these models. So you can see the, the, so the complexity is slightly smaller, but for reduced use cases, uh, here we have a use case that allows you to do some coding. So it generates code based on a, on a prompt. Uh, we have models that allow you to do uh, sort of mathematical operations. Uh, and you can sort of create your own custom model for a particular use case deployed on an edge device and have it running on, on something like a point of sale, for example. If you allow it to do it, it could uh, optimize your uh, smart uh, experience, like the yep. smartphone, yep. in all kinds of ways, uh, analyzing how you use it and stuff. Yep. And it could basically do that on the edge all the time to yep. improve your experience. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that's the idea, is that you can always rely on the cloud, but you may not want to rely on the cloud, and you really want to have the best experience on your device on the edge all the time. Yep. Right. Let me uh, bring you along to the final demo that I wanted to show you. Yeah. If you come over here. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Um, I'm going to uh, so show my friend here um, okay. demo, if you don't mind, very, very quickly. Um, so what we have here is a new uh, processor from Mambic called uh, Apollo A510. They've just launched uh, very recently. And this is a completely other end of the scale in terms of AI at the edge. What we are talking about here is an AI model that's running on a Cortex M55 processor. This is a microprocessor from ARM. Um, so nothing like this uh, Cortex, big Cortex-A processor that we were talking about earlier. This is very low power, um, but very high performance. And what you can see here in this particular case, we have two Apollo boards from Ambic. One of them is the Apollo 4, based on uh, Cortex-M4, which is running at about 4 frames per second, 4.5 frames, frames per second. 
At the other side, you have the Apollo 510 that they just launched based on M55. If you look at the frames per second, it's close to 50. So about 10 times performance. But I think that's important, but what you can also see really interesting is the, the energy per inference is about a third of, the, of what you had on, on Cortex-M4. So in total, the inference per megajoule, is, which is why, how they measure uh, and sort of performance uh, or energy efficiency, is about 30 times higher on the new Cortex-M55 compared to the, the previous Cortex-M4. Uh, so does that mean the M55 has AI acceleration on the MC? It does, it does. So this is part of the ARM instruction set, uh, for those familiar with it. Uh, the Cortex-M uh, or the ARM V8.1 um, um, instruction set has a, has a extension called Helium, which is dedicated to things like DSP and AI. So you can allow, allow you to do, run this kind of really complex uh, image detection models on battery powered devices very, very uh, energy efficiently. But often they need to have low power, yep. very low power consumption. Some yep. of them run around years on a battery and stuff like correct, that. Correct, correct. And it's still possible, even yes, with extra performance. Yes, yes, absolutely. So this is what this is all about. It's about power efficiency, it's about um, battery management, uh, but it's about also bringing those new edge AI use cases into the mass market. And it's just so many applications, huh? Uh, absolutely, AI absolutely. I think uh, what we love to see in ARM is what our partners can do with, uh, with our technology. They come up with great applications and, um, and we, we can't wait to see what they do with, uh, with, with uh, Cortex-M55 and with Helio in the future.